Okay, so today we're going to be working with regular pencils, all right? Now, this is what you're gonna end up working toward, okay? Um, this is in your sketchbook, all right? Mine is in the media section, so what you wanna do is in your media section, the first available plain page, okay, after the divider, you're gonna be working um, in your sketchbook, okay? Now, we're gonna go step by step. Um, after you are done with this, assignment then you're able to do your media focus project okay all right so let's kind of get let's get going I'm actually gonna do it on a regular piece of paper so um, you're doing it in your sketchbook okay so first thing you're gonna need there are a couple of supplies that you're probably gonna use all right and I'm gonna explain to you how these work um, first thing is one of these ebony pencils okay so this is a drawing pencil pencils are not kind of created equal okay they actually have different hardnesses that means they are either lighter or darker um based on the the lead that they have okay the graphite excuse me all right this one's a little bit extra darker okay which is great because we need to kind of get a darker um value all right all right we're actually gonna use our regular pencil to um kind of outline our paper. All right, so next, this is a blending stump, okay, also known as a tortillion. Um, I'm fine with blending stump. The, I only use these for pencils, okay? They can be done with other um, art materials, but I only use it for pencil. This is made with paper, all right? There are some that are rolled. Um, I prefer you not to unroll them, all right? This is great to help with shading. Regular eraser, need eraser. All right, regular eraser is great for taking off a whole bunch of um, color. Excuse me, color pencils, yes, or regular pencils all at once. All right, the kneaded eraser, which is kind of why you need it. All right, um, you mix it up, takes off pencil gradually. Okay, now I'm going to warn you that I, I really expect this. Um, need eraser to end up back into its container, okay? They seem to go missing quite often um, because people are playing with it because they think it's more like Play-Doh or putty. It is not, okay? They are not um, cheap, all right? Um, so it must end up back in its box. All right, so let's get going on this. Okay, so on your your paper, what you're gonna do is, we're gonna be dividing this out, all right? So toward the top, not toward the middle, I want a little bit toward the top. You're gonna put a line across your paper. If you need to go get a ruler, it's fine. At any point that you need to pause this video, um, because I'm either going too fast, or you need to um, you know, go back and listen to what I'm saying, absolutely fine. All right, so first, we're gonna have a box, one box, we're gonna have, um, Two bucks. All right, three bucks. Um, first box. We're gonna label texture. Next one. Value scale. Third, gradation. All right. So the first one. I want you to divide this into six sections. Okay. Body scale, one, two, three, okay. Top one, one, two. Next one, it's gonna be four. Bottom one, you ready? We're gonna do six. All right. Next box I need you to do, straight, long, rectangle. Waves. And try to go and match the, the top of the bottom. Here's what I'm going to show you something really cool that you can do. Okay? And the bottom one's going to be, um, let's do a circle. Okay. All right, and at the bottom, just label this pencil. There we go. Okay, so we're going to first start off with um, our texture. All right? And by the way, if you ever need to zoom in, Okay, you can actually take a video and you can zoom in so you can see what I'm doing um, a little bit clearer, all right? First one, textures. You can do different textures with your pencil, all 
All right, so what we're gonna do is I want you to label fluffy. So what is a, a, a texture? So fluffy, what would come to mind? I'm, I'm thinking more of like cotton, okay? Now cotton we can feel, all right? But not with the case when we're looking at a drawing, all right? So textures, we're able to do what's called implied, all right? So fluffy's gonna be our implied texture that we're gonna first start with, all right? Um, when I think of fluffy, I think of like soft. So everyone can copy this. So fluffy. Okay. Other textures might be something that might be, um, oh, that's a great idea. Rough. What else we got? Sandy, very good. You know what? I'll have you, you gotta do those two, but the last three are your choice, okay? So what I want you to do is pause the video right here, and I want you to fill in what you would think rough would look like, what you would think sandy might look like, okay? And come up with three other ones and do them. If you find that you're having a hard time, Another thing you could do is you could always look up online, okay? You always pause and be like, well, what can I come up with, all right? All right, textures, by the way, are a great way of making your artwork have a little bit more depth to it so it doesn't look all flat, all right? Okay, next, value scale. So the value scale is pretty cool, all right? Because it basically takes what's called achromatic, Okay, so I'm gonna actually write that word. Let's write it right here. Achromatic. So what is achromatic? Achromatic means pencil drawing. Okay, it means pencil. So all the colors are made with pencil. So it takes all the colors that it can create and it breaks it down, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of fill this in. So the darker the value, okay, Value, by the way, is the lightness and darkness of a color. Ooh, actually, I should have switched over. Actually, you'll find that this one goes even darker. Oh my gosh, okay? The value of a pen, of the um, pencil, okay, can change based on the pressure. All right, so I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. And a little bit even lighter. Now, this is pretty easy. We got different, you know, if you find that something's not as light or as dark, you can always go back and you can lighten this. So how do we use this? You just press on it, okay? And it will take up a little bit, okay? And that's it. It will get dirty, but you just fold it into each other. And it's fine, right? Or if you need to darken, you can darken it. All right, so let's see if we can stretch this even more. All right, and actually I'm gonna show you what this is. So we have a four step. So we're gonna make this a little darker. And when you're filling in with your values, you wanna make sure that there's no empty open space, okay? And get lighter, and even lighter, and the lightest, okay? Now what is a blending stump? Okay, blending stump actually takes all that graphite and it mushes it together. Um, just the tip, this is, so this is a brand new one, and normally they're dark, okay? You actually kind of want that darkness because it actually helps um, mush it together. There we are. It also extends your shading, fills it in that space too, okay? Now another way to do that is your fingers. So if you're stuck, you're like, I don't have this. Um, you can always blend in with your fingers and it will blend in those spaces. All right. So let's break this down into sex even more. So, there we are, not bad. Okay, so we have dark values, we have light, and we have medium, somewhere in the middle, okay? 
So the light ones tend to be on the, the further end over here. These are the mediums and these are dark ones. All right, so that's a value scale. Um, you might find that if you're shading, okay, and you're looking at something that has a solid um, shadow or maybe it might have like a just a solid color, that's what you're looking at, okay? Gradation, my favorite. So gradation, we're gonna try to cram in four. It's this idea of taking the color a smooth transition all the way to the end. <sighs> Lovely, right? Okay, so we're going to do this three times here. Okay, and I want you to try to make sure that you don't do a tornado. That means when you go start off wide and you go smaller and smaller. Okay, the first two I want you to do it without the blending stump, and then the last two I want you to blend it with the blending stump. Trying to keep nice and you know, constant um, blending, or shading, excuse me, all the way through. All right. Oops, let's try to even get a little darker. Isn't that awesome how dark it gets? Okay. The hard part is trying to stretch it all the way out. Okay, so let's see, let's compare what it looks like when you do a blending stump. See, I can stretch it out even more. Okay. Honestly, both um, ideas are great. Uh, without, it gives it kind of a gritty look, which is wonderful. The blending stump gives it more of a smooth look. Okay. So, filling in. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to fill this in because it's pretty easy to keep it all the way through here. So we're gonna blend it all the way through. The hard part is filling this in. So filling it in so it matches and it continues to fade all the way through. Beautiful, right? Okay, so the next one, a little bit different. We are going to kind of make this look like a weave. So, huh, here we go. We're gonna get dark. We're gonna get light as it curves down. Dark, curves back. Light as it curves this way. Dark, curves up, back to dark. Okay. Short little gradation practice. Okay. So you can uh, do gradation back and forth, back and forth, and it actually gives the appearance, okay, of things coming forward. All right, we can actually darken that in center a little bit even more, and it'll really pop. Right? Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right, shading on a curve, all right? It's kind of like one of those things that you kind of need to, like, just practice. If this one doesn't come out good, you can definitely do a second one. So what I do is I tend to put my lines in, and then I just kind of get lighter and lighter and I start filling it in. So sometimes I'll do little circles, and get darker. Okay. Sometimes I do lines. That's what it's going to be. Okay? So if you ever have a curved surface, you got to shade with the curve. All right. So far, so good. Yes? Yes. Excellent. All right, next we're going to start working on how to shade objects, all right? For the bottom part, you are going to need to grab um, some cylinders, uh, not, excuse me, wooden objects. They're in the gray cabinet by the door, all right? So if you open up, you'll see a box that says wooden objects um, or wooden blocks. In them are colored and white blocks. I would prefer you to use the white blocks, okay, so you can really see the shadows. Um, Yes, the lights are going to probably be on. Um, what I'm hoping is that we can turn off the lights <laughs> and it'll be a lot easier. Um, my, so one of the things you can do is that the natural light coming through the window should be enough if you take your object and you put it on a white piece of paper. You should see the shadows. If not, I do have some um, little flashlights underneath the whiteboard by the digital section. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's kind of look at what 
we're talking about when we're, we want to shade, all right? So I'm going to do a little bit of a sketch here. You're going to copy in a little bit of notes, and then I'll tell you what you need to complete over here. All right, so we're actually going to do a ball. Actually, I'm going to go up and around, all right? So you want to make a sphere. So as we kind of know with spheres, we have the shade um, around with them, all right? So I'm going to shade. around. All right, and when we do this, the reason that we do it like this, okay, I'll tell you in a second, it's because of the, um, the light, all right? So it gets darker. Now, I'm going to blend this in a little bit, smooth it in, all right? And I'm going to lighten an area, okay, up at the top. I'll tell you why. All right. So why did I do that? All right. A couple things. Light source. So light source is what kind of, um, where's your light coming from? Right? So a lot of times when the light is hitting in one direction, all right, you will have what's called the highlight. Okay? The highlight is normally the lightest space or the lightest spot. Okay? It's not like a little like the little um square, all right? It's just a lightened area on your space. All right, there we go. That's better. All right. You have the middle. These are called your mid or light values, all right? So this is where it starts getting a little dark, all right? Now, one thing I did not put in, okay, is when you look at your object, okay, that you're gonna draw, you're gonna notice that your shadow may or may not look exactly like your, your object, okay? It may or may not be short, may or may not be long, okay? All right couple things. On the actual object, the wooden object, this is called a core shadow, okay, because it's the object that itself, okay. This is called the cast shadow, okay. This cast shadow might look different because you might have another object here. Your cast shadow may be on the ground and maybe on another object. You really got to peek and see where these um, cast shadows are, okay? Core shadows, all right, tend to be on the object and tend to be on the furthest side of where the highlight is, okay? Now, what we're going to do is you're going to be getting a couple of wooden blocks, all right? And in this space here, you're going to be drawing, th excuse me, four, three different sets of um, pictures, okay? drawings, all right? Now, in my example here, all right, you do not need to do this setup. You're going to be doing one, two, two single, okay, objects, and then one built. You may use two or three um, blocks to build your object, okay? So we have one, one, and then you have two to three built, okay? You must include the shadows, okay? You need cast shadows, you need core shadows, all right? And all the other stuff. Um, don't forget, when you have an object, okay, definitely grab a piece of white paper. There is scrap paper, by the way, by the window um, leading outside that you can put your object on, all right? After you're done with this, okay, one thing you might want to suggest doing is washing your hands, okay? Because it's going to get really, really um, dirty, okay? Yeah, definitely. A um, couple of little tidbits about this. Uh, pencil drawings, if you're ever having difficulty figuring out what would be light, what would be dark, turn an image to um, the black and white setting, and then you'll be able to see all those beautiful values, okay? All right, so once you're done with this, you are able to start working on your focus project that you can choose from. Okay, and that's it.